Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and one thing you will agree with me is that we programmers are good with experience, not with memorizing this stuff. For example, if you ask a programmer, hey, we want to build an authentication system, he surely can do, I can surely can do that. But I don't memorize the exact same steps and exact same commands, I'll figure out on the go. Research is a big important part of every programmer or every DevOps engineer or every sysop admins and whatever that is. We love to do research. We know by looking at it that, yeah, this worked last time, but this didn't work last time. So we need a bit amount of time with research. That research might happen with the Google, with the Stack Overflow, these days with the ChatGPT or any other client. But with that, we know that it takes time to do the research and then we can do the job. That's exactly true. And I'm loving this AI hype. And again, you would agree one more time with me that this AI hype is of two kinds. The first, where the companies are trying to fear mongering us and saying that, hey, we will replace the developers. We know how true that is. And on the other side, there are companies which I absolutely love, which are saying that, hey, we have built a co-passenger for you. You are still in charge or, and you are on the driving wheel, but we have built a co-passenger that will help you to do a good research work, a fast-paced research work, bit accurate result, will understand your context, but you are still in, in charge. You ask this co-passenger what you want to do, what you not want to do. You just consult with him. And I love this approach. A lot of people are doing with this approach, great job. A lot of companies have built great plugins and tools for your VS Code, for your Vim, and you can inject right away this AI co-passenger in your code editor, and that will help you to be a, a better a person on the wheel. You can do research faster, you can understand the context better, but you're still in, in charge. And I think one thing that was missing, and especially for the people who are in the DevOps industry and managing servers and VPS and whatnot, is yes, we love the the terminal in the VS code, we do love it, but hey, it's, it's not cutting the job. We need something more powerful, and I think the approach that is taken by the warp is in the right direction. They are moving that, hey, we are not taking the driving wheel from you, we are just helping you to be a co-passenger. I saw one such update by warp, and I thought, let's make a video around it, that what they are doing, how they are doing it, and is it good enough? Is it worth that? So uh, let's go ahead and explore this and let me walk you through with what, what did I saw and why I made this video. So today I opened up my warp and I saw there's a new feature update and I saw that there is a new video on their uh, YouTube channel as well. I'll link that. Uh, you can just go ahead and search that. Uh, I'll probably link that in the description as well. So there's a new feature that new agent mode in the warp. So use plain English on command line. Let's just click on the learn more and it opens up uh, my browser, so let's go ahead and explore this. So this is where they say that, hey, we have built an agent mode, the LLM embedded in the terminal for multi-step workflow. There are some great examples of what you can do, what probably you can understand, but hey, you know what's the best one? And by the way, you can read the videos about the PG Bouncer. This is exactly the video that I saw on their channel. But what I'm more interested in is doing things on my own, how good it is, how valuable it is for me, and all of the things. Can, he, can it reduce down my time of doing the research work? See, uh, if you have ever done any kind of VPS work, uh, you know that we can SSH into that, we know the commands, we know to set up the firewalls and disabling the root users and whatnot. But as a beginner, you would be doing the research, so hey, AI is the best way to just do all of that and he ask help from the AI, basically. So I think, let's see what happens up here. And once you go into the verb, what I can do is I can toggle on and off about uh, understanding the natural language for the AI. But first, uh, my problem is that, hey, do you understand still my command or are you totally into AI mode now? So let's just say if I do a quick LS, it understands that this was a command, it gives me the output. Let's go ahead and say that we want to go into Redux Toolkit. So I'll go into Redux Toolkit Crash and let's go in. It goes there. If I do a PWD, it understands that this is a command. All right, good enough, good enough. Uh, not happy with the test yet. I want to grill it a little bit more. Now let's try its AI ability. So I want to, uh, I want to uh, set up a VPS and I am doing, oops, doing this for if I can write that, that would be super awesome. <laughs> and I'm doing this for the first time. First time. I, I have an Ubuntu machine. I'll, I'll just try, I'll just try with Ubuntu first. 
I have an Ubuntu machine. How can I secure my VPS? <laughs> that, that's a good question. Uh, let's see what it's doing. All right, all right. So there are a few good steps. Let's analyze these steps, how good they are and what all it is doing. And can we ask some follow-up questions? And oh, goodness, oh, goodness. Oh, a lot of this. Let's analyze this, that how good this is. And then we'll judge it. Yes, judgment is allowed on this channel. We'll judge it how good this is. So all right, so setting up and securing VPS on Ubuntu machine involves several steps. Here's a guideline. Oh, goodness, that's good. I think that's noteworthy. I should save it. If it is all noteworthy, I would properly prefer to save it somewhere in my notes, Markdown or something. So create a new user. So I'll create a new user. This looks good. We are adding this user onto a pseudo group, a classic 101. Uh, logging into a VPS using new user. So go ahead and do a SSH into the new user. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, but I don't know how to set up this SSH. So we'll ask a follow-up question that how can I log in uh, this new user using the SSH? We'll follow this up. Uh, then we'll love to do an update and upgrade. Good enough. Then it's enabling a firewall, uh, UFW, uh, uncomplicated firewall. Pretty common stuff. Everybody uses that. I use that a lot. It allows the open SSH and uh, UFW enable. That's good enough. I have seen that. It also allows uh, port 80, 443, and 2222 for custom SSH port. If you change it, oh, where did I change it? Secure SSH. All right, so uh, disable the root login. Oh, that's good, good step. Uh, we'll open up the sudo. Uh, we can do all of this stuff, modify the port, uh, permit root login, no, password authentication, no, good, good stuff. Uh, sudo system SSH, okay, so this is restarting the service. Good stuff, I think if I would have done the research, I would have come up with this. Oh, now it gives me the SSH key-based authentication. So SSH keygen, so this is the key generation part. SSH copy, uh, this is a utility which copies your SSH key and we can actually log in uh, onto this port and this will do the SSH step. But where am I setting the SSH, my public keys into the server? Oh, this is where I'm doing it. This is where I'm doing it. <laughs> no, this is not. No, this is not. I'm not setting up my SSH yet, I guess. Uh, I have to <laughs> be patient on that. And again, this is a most um, less used, but I sometimes even forget to install the fail to ban. This actually protects your server VPS from the brute force attacks. And this is good enough. I can just, oh, I can just execute that. I can copy this command. I would copy that. This is exactly what I was talking about. Let me be in charge. <laughs> you don't do all the stuff. I'll permit you to do this stuff. All right, so install anti-malware. Oh. I think you are good in this one. I, I haven't done that recently. <laughs> uh, so install the uh, CLAM AV, install the Linus. Ah, I do this auditing. Uh, disable the unused services, good enough. Regular backup, uh, journal CTL, good enough, good enough. So let's ask a follow-up question. I am not sure about the SSH setup from my machine to VPS. Uh, can you give me steps for it? Okay, so this is the SSH generation part. This is, uh, this is, this is better, this is better. I am able to understand it much better now. I'm more confident on this one. Generate the SSH key, uh, pair on the local machine, open your terminal, run this command. I'm on, already on terminal, you don't know this. <laughs> uh, you will be prompted to enter a file name to save the key. Okay, good enough, good enough. SSH copy, all right, new user copy. If you change the SSH port, you need to use that port, good enough. And once you have copied the SSH key, log in into your VPS using SSH. Okay, I'll do that, logging in. Ensure that the SSH key-based authentication is enabled in the SSH, so I can go into sudo, uh, nano and etc SSH SSHD config, and I can mention this, all right, and we have to restart the service, and then I can test the SSH connection. Good enough, good enough. Uh, let's push it beyond the boundaries a little bit more. I want to uh, set up a web server. Uh, everybody knows Nginx, but we'll go with the caddy. Uh, using caddy, uh, can you 
give me commands give me commands to do that all right so it's uh, update your package and install dependencies so these are de oh goodness i don't have to hunt for the dependencies i love that download install official caddy repository good enough i'll trust that Verify that the caddy is installed correctly, caddy version. You should see the version number of the caddy installed, uh, configured in the caddy file. Add a simple configuration to your serve. We should do a video on this one that how we can use all of this command and can set up an SSH server, configure it, and we should do a separate follow-up video. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a follow-up video where we spin up a DigitalOcean machine or maybe a Linode machine or any machine. And we just do all these commands and figure out that, hey, if this is all good or, although it looks good, but let me know in the comments if you want me to do a follow-up. And adjust the permissions. Yeah, this is the one that I usually forget. And system, starting the caddy services, verify. I think it's, it's a good one. So I can just query this and all of this. And let's see, if I do a ls, uh, let's see if it can do some real work. And uh, yeah, please run this. This is a command. Okay, so thinking. All right, so back. I can hit a backspace to exit this mode and can hit an ls. And uh, there we go. If it is okay to read the output, yes, please go ahead, read the output. All right, so this, let's see if we can uh, ask it to make a uh, containerize this. How can I containerize, containerize this application in current folder? Can I do? All right. Hmm. Basic Docker file instruction provided. All right, all right. Hmm. Let's see if we can push it more. Create a Docker Docker file for me with above code that you provided me. All right, good enough. Let's see if we can run this. I love this. I am an in charge. Did I click on it? Oh, I have to just hit enter. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, can we run the cat on Docker file? And yes, there is actually a Docker file, which includes the node, happy with this, working directory, copied the package.json, then installed the dependencies, and then copied my current folder, exposed the port. Ah. Oh. Can I do it more? Can you build a Docker image with a tag of Redux? With a tag of Redux on it? Ooh, good. Let's hit enter. I'm not leaving my terminal. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having just fun. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and see. I have my Docker file, it is containerized. Oh man, this is good, this is good. This is something I love. Anyways, so I hope you got the idea that why I think this is really nice and fun. Uh, and as you noticed, I am an in charge here. That is the best part I like about it. And on top of that, I was able to switch my context, give it a context that, hey, I have this file, so you figure out how to build a Docker file for it. Uh, maybe I can be on a Python-based system. I can ask it that, hey, help me to dockerize it. And then probably I can ask it even that, hey, just go ahead and push it to the Docker registry or something. I was able to build my servers, uh, secure them, install a caddy on that. I would definitely love to do a follow-up video on that. But my whole goal of presenting this video in front of you was to make sure that you identify the companies which makes you in charge. They are not fear-mongering. They are building the tools to help you, to assist you, to speedify your work and makes you a better developer. Remember, we all are just uh, people who love to do research and based on the research, we pick our code and we stitch that code to build our application. That's, that's all we do. 
So no need to be afraid of AI. Consider this as a tool. Uh, we were never be uh, never were afraid of the intelligence that came to the code editor. This is intelligence a little bit on with a juiced up intelligence. So I love this. I appreciate this. And this is just a kind of a raw video to help you understand the context of it and what the AI tools are doing. So I think I'll do a follow-up video in making sure that you understand how can I log into the machine and do a full follow-up on that. I think you will be interested in that. Let me know in the comment section and I'll surely do that. That's it for this video. Enjoy the videos and I'll surely come up with the more. Do hit the subscribe in case you are new here.